So what do you think is the cheapest possible power bank and how much does it cost? So I think it's this one from China, from eBay, and it costs just 80 cents including shipping. It's simply called a power bank. It's just a small box with USB in and USB out connectors. And if you ask how it's possible that something like this is so cheap, the explanation is simple. There is no battery inside. Well, let's open it up and see. It doesn't have a battery in it. You are supposed to put your own battery into it, but that's not a problem. I have already prepared one. And it can take a standard lithium ion or lithium polymer battery, standard 18 650 size with the voltage of about 3.7 volts and typical capacity about 2300 milliamp hours. So let's try this out. I put the cell into it. It's a little bit harder to put it in. It seems like the battery compartment is just a little bit too short. I have some difficulties inside the battery, but yeah, I have managed to do it. But it's really tight. It's really tight inside. So the battery is in it and let's connect something to it. Let's check the voltage. 5.07, that's good voltage. Let's connect some load. My rubbish iPhone. Yeah, it's charging now. The current is 0.65 amps and the voltage is 4.99 and there is a blue LED indicating it's operating. When I unplug it, should the LED turn off? Should it? Or is it going to discharge the battery? Yes, now it's off. It will take some time. If the LED stayed on, it will discharge the battery. Okay, it seems to work. And the blue LED is indicating a load connected to it. So it seems to be good. Let's try to charge it. And plug it in. And a red LED is blinking, indicating a charging process. It seems okay. Let's measure the charging current. And it is 0.78 amps. And 5 volts. Okay, it's a good charging current. It seems okay for just 80 cents. Except the battery is a little bit hard to insert because the battery space is slightly too short. And this is an unprotected battery. If you had a protected battery, you would have some protective circuitry here, some tiny board on it and probably it would be too long for it. So you would probably have to cut this spring a little bit or press this contact to fit a protected battery into it. So what is the quiescent current? How much does it draw from a battery when it's not in use? And it's about 0.11 milliamps. That's not much. 
how long does it take before the current will discharge the battery? So the capacity is 2300 mAh and the quiescent current is 0.11 mA and it gives you 20,900 something hours and this is about 2.38 years. So the battery is now at about 3.9 volts and let's see what is the maximum current you can draw from it. Okay, I have connected my USB tester and a makeshift electronic load and now it's drawing about 0.92 amps 1.11 1.14 now the voltage is only 4.62 we are now at 1.17 1.19 1.2 1.21 and the voltage is only 4.2 volts, that's not good. 1.25 and now it's turning off. So about 1.25 amps is the maximum. And anything higher is making it cut off. And the voltage with this current is only 4.22 volts. That's not a good voltage for USB. Let's go back a little bit. 1.15 amps and the voltage is 4.57. That's so so. So let's go back a little bit. 1 amp. At 1 amp exactly, we have the voltage 4.94. That's a good voltage. So I think the maximum current is really 1 amp. So this is the current versus voltage chart and you can see at 1 amp the voltage is really fine. At 1.1 amps it's getting too low for USB and at 1.25 amps it's shutting down. So I have connected a power supply instead of a battery and I have measured that it will shut down at 3.1 volts. So the minimum battery voltage is 3.1 volts, which is fine for a lithium ion or a lithium polymer battery. But you have to recharge the battery up to 3.55 volts to turn it back on. So there is a hysteresis. When the voltage is below 3.1 volts, the battery is completely disconnected and protected against the deep discharge. Because discharging a lithium ion battery under 3 volts or 2.5 volts in the worst case would destroy it. When the battery is discharging you can see a steady blue light. And when the voltage of the battery is approaching the minimum value, the blue LED starts blinking. So the blue blinking light indicates about the last 10% of the battery capacity. And when the battery is charging the red light is blinking. And now the battery is fully charged, you can see a steady red light, the charging current drops to zero and the battery voltage now is 4.16 volts. It's nice and it could work just as a battery charger as well. And the last step of course is taking it to bits. So remove the battery. And there's just a tiny board and the contacts. And that's it. This is just empty case. And this is the tiny board. And there's not much of it on the board. There is just the USB connector and the two LEDs. And on the other side, there is the mini USB connector, a chip with 8 pins, 3 SMD capacitors and one inductor. And that's it, there is nothing else on it. So I have reverse engineered a schematic of it and 
there is not much of it there is just an 8 pin chip with few components around there's the battery a capacitor in parallel with it another capacitor in parallel with the USB in and the third capacitor is in parallel with the USB out and there are two LEDs the blue one indicates the discharging and when it's blinking it is indicating last about 10% of the capacity and the red one is indicating the charging when it's blinking it is still charging and when it's steady light it is fully charged and there is an inductor 1.5 millihenry and this is for a step up and step down inverter the inductor basically works as a step up when it's discharging and it's stepping up the voltage from the battery from 3.7 volts to 5 volts and when it's charging the inductor is stepping the voltage down from 5 volts to 3.7 so the chip contains a step up and step down inverter probably with a half bridge of MOSFETs and it works in synchronous mode so there is no high voltage drop of a diode and it controls the charging process and the maximum voltage of the battery and the discharging process and the minimum voltage of the battery it also controls the maximum current and shuts down when there's overcurrent and it also controls the LED indicators and basically it does absolutely everything so this was an interesting teardown I really like this product it works really well up to 1 amp and the only problem I see in it is that there is no fuse in series with the battery so if the chip goes short and honestly most of the semiconductors almost always fail short the battery is going to be shorted and lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries are nasty because they can catch fire in such condition so I would definitely add a fuse into the design update this inductor is actually 1.5 micro henry not millihenry so this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos.